My family farms over 7,000 acres. Uh, we produce cotton, alfalfa, wheat, barley, and corn silage. I farm with my dad, my brothers, and my sister, and my uncle. Currently serve as president of the Arizona Farm Bureau Federation. I'm here on behalf of the American Farm Bureau. I've also served on the USDA Air Quality Task Force uh, for the past 10 years. I'm pleased to be able to testify before this subcommittee. While there are many issues dealing uh, in agriculture, this committee's jurisdiction can, can help us to improve. I wanted to touch on just a few of the more serious issues we have in front of us today. The first issue is the pending EPA decision on revising the ambient air quality standard, uh, coarse particulate matter, uh, PM10, otherwise known as farm dust. Unlike the smaller fine particles, coarse particulate matter is primarily naturally occurring and made up of dirt and other crustal materials. It occurs while driving on unpaved roads, using tractors in the fields, moving livestock from pen to pen and pasture to pasture. Also, unlike fine particles where the health impacts are well studied, EPA says for coarse PM, it would be appropriate to consider either retaining or revising the current standard based on the science. Even with the lack of data, the Clean Air Science Advisory Committee, KSEC, recommends that the standard level be reduced. EPA is currently considering this option. Many areas in rural America already have difficulty meeting the current standard. Uh, my own county in Maricopa County is currently non-attainment, serious non-attainment, and we're having a hard time meeting the current standard we have. Uh, just a couple of weeks ago, you probably saw on the, the news the big wall of dust that came through our, our valley, uh, mile high, 50 miles across, it swept through Phoenix. We certainly hope that, that they'll declare that a naturally occurring event and, uh, and give us an exception to the standard for that day. Uh, a recent study shows there'll be many more rural areas that will not be able to meet a revised standard. Uh, this will result in more regulation of farming and ranching activities, such as restrictive speed limits on unpaved roads, restrictions on when and how we can work in the fields or move livestock, as states attempt to get back into the attainment area. We favor retaining the current standard, especially where there's little or no science to justify the change of it. We support H.R. 2458 from Mr. Flake that would put a review of the ambient air quality standards on a more reasonable 10-year cycle instead of the current 5-year cycle. Too often, EPA is revising the standards before states have had time to comply with the previous standard. H.R. 2458 would correct this situation. We also support H.R. 2033 that would exclude naturally occurring events from federal regu regulation unless it causes serious adverse health and welfare effects. A second issue that I'd like to address is the continuing regulation of greenhouse gases by EPA. As we have testified previously before this committee, farmers and ranchers receive a double economic jolt from such regulations. First, any cost incurred by utilities, refineries, manufacturers, and other large emitters to comply with greenhouse gas regulatory requirements will pass on to the consumers those costs of production, namely farmers and ranchers. The cost that will be passed down will result in higher fuel and energy costs to grow our food and fiber. Farmers and ranchers, on the other hand, cannot pass these increased costs of production. Secondly, farmers and ranchers will also incur direct cost as a result of the regulation of greenhouse gases by EPA. For the first time, many farms and ranch operations will be subject to direct new source review, prevention of significant deterioration, construction permits, and Title V permits requirements under the Clean Air Act. EPA itself has estimated there are over 37,000 farms that will emit between 100 and 25,000 tons of greenhouse gases per year and thus have to attain the Title V permit. Using EPA's numbers, just the expense of obtaining these permits could cost agriculture over $866 million. On the other hand, this costly burdensome regulatory scheme will produce very little, if any, environmental benefit. Unless and until the countries of the world agree on an international treaty on greenhouse gas emissions, unilateral regulation of greenhouse gases by EPA will have little environmental effect. Farm Bureau strongly supports H.R. 910, which passed the House. In light of the recent Supreme Court decision in American Electric Power versus Connecticut, we believe additional legislation is necessary to clarify that entities cannot be sued just because they emit greenhouse gases. The court left open the issue of standing and common law actions in the absence of EPA regulatory authority. Legislation is needed to resolve those issues. We thank the subcommittee for its attention to the needs of rural America, and I look forward to answering your questions. Thank you.